So, okay, so we're not looking at the journal yet. I was gonna do kind of like a discussion or a short-ish discussion uh, before we wrapped up the game because I'm sensing that it's coming very close. Um, but I wanted to show you a few things that I found. So basically for the last 15 minutes or so, I've just been walking around the house uh, thinking, trying to, I was actually trying to decide uh, if I should tell a personal story that seemed kind of relevant to the game or the scenario, but I, uh, I decided against it. So, uh, but I did find a few things that I wanted to show you. So we have a, uh, a salon slip from our mother uh, from actually four months ago. And look how cheap this stuff is. Shampoo and set, $12. Okay, color, 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 $22.50. I'm sorry, you go and get your, <laughs> you go and get your hair colored uh, nowadays, and it is uh, five times that. Five times that. You are paying like, I feel like you're paying like 100 bucks if you're getting the color. A perm, $60. Never gotten a perm, so I don't know about that. Manicure is $15. Where are you going to find a $15 ma manicure nowadays? Huh? Well, I guess it depends on if you actually get, like, acrylic nails or if it's just a manicure. Just a manicure, maybe, like, $20, $25 nowadays. Uh, you get an acrylic nails, so you're looking at a minimum is starting at 30 bucks. Anyway, the other thing that I found that I wanted to show you was the bookmark. And I know I told you about it. It's not the same. It's not the same. I want to show you. And plus, maybe you don't believe me, huh? You don't have to take my word for it. Uh, I will show you myself. Dang it. What is wrong with my W key? Yeah, I've just been walking around thinking about the game and trying to decide if I wanted to tell uh, a personal story. Decided not to. Walt Whitman. Anyway, here's the bookmark. Timberline Booksellers, new used hardcover, blah, blah, blah. But on the back, take your time. I'm glad to have it in good hands. From Rick, who we know, I don't remember how we know, but we do know that that is her, that is uh, the mother's co-worker. And I found something else from him, too that I don't remember what it was exactly, but it kind of like made me think that there might be something going on between them. Or at least like it might imply it. Uh, the other thing, actually, oh, it was the concert ticket. He went with his coworker? That is, that's a little weird. I mean, I mean, I, it could be weird, I guess. It has the potential for weirdness, okay? But look, I, I just realized this. I was walking around the house and Richard Morris Patermeck, whoever, Rick. So he was getting married. Plus the fact that, um, well, but our parents are on a couple's retreat right now. It's a couple's retreat to like strengthen your marriage. Yeah, two days ago. I don't know if that means that they have a solid marriage and they're just keeping it healthy or if that means um or if that means that their relation their marriage has been struggling and so they're working on it because of that keep in mind that early early on in the game we even found a self-help book i think it i think it's in the parents bathroom i think it doesn't matter i'm not gonna waste time uh because i know i do that a lot Okay, let's go back up. We're gonna do our little discussion. But, uh, oh! Wait, what about the, what about the, the combination? I will try my best to talk and do my discussion while I'm looking for that uh, code. I've been walking around the house. I don't think I've missed anything, so. Anyway, so basically, here's my take on the game. This is Kate's room. And it's like nothing is here. Nothing is here. And they've lived in this house for, I feel like, almost a year. And uh, a lot of stuff is like really, really still packed. I mean, maybe they're busy. I don't know. But it really feels like the main character of this game is Sam and not Kate. So I don't know if that would mean... 
Kate is the playable character, but Sam seems to be the protagonist. In fact, if you think about it, we know so little about Kate, our character that we're playing. Um, we know that she's athletic because she has trophies um, in the main hall. We know that uh, she's adventurous just from the fact that she's been traveling um, for the last who knows how long. Um, what else do we know about Kate? I mean, really? That's kind of it. We know that she has a really good, solid relationship with her sister, Sam. But now, what do we... Compare that with what we know about Sam. Like, she's creative. We know about her creative writing stories. We know that she's rebellious. We know that she's... I mean... We know her sexual orientation. We know that she, what she wanted to do with her life after after college. Um, she wanted to take that creative writing course at like some college. We just know so much more about Sam that in comparison, we know hardly anything about Kate. Um, I think that may be intentional because this is a, yeah, this is what I was talking about. This is what I was talking about. Um, lost my train of thought. <laughs> ADHD. Right. I think that's intentional that we know more about Sam because that's who this story is about. And Katie, Kate or Katie, I forget what they call her, is more of a, this is how you can, this is how you're finding out the story. And they want you to focus on the rest, the other members of the family. And it's not just Sam. I feel like we actually know more about the parents individually than we do about um, Kate as well. We know uh, about the father's career, how he wanted to be a novelist at first and it bombed and then he kind of just took up, uh, he took up writing because, um, or he took up writing reviews for technology or, you know, electronics or whatever and it wasn't going good. Um, the mother, we know that she was very good at her job and she got a promotion. We know that she might. I, this, this is like debatable, I know, but maybe possibly implying that she's having an affair with a coworker who is now married. Um, oh, another thing we know about the father too is we found um, we found a note down in the basement, I think it was the basement, that was from our grandfather, so our father's father, that was kind of cold and detached and critical, which is unfortunate. I was just here. Wow. Good job, me. Um, so we know that the father doesn't have a very warm... Ooh. Whoop! Spooky! <laughs> oh, that was pretty good. I can't believe I didn't look at this before. We know that he doesn't have a very warm relationship with his father. Um, what's this say? I can't read it. For God so loved the world... For God so loved the world, he gave his only son. Great. Um, right. So... We know that the parents are a lot more protective of Sam than they are of Kate because uh, remember she had to sneak out to go to a concert. I think we found, I think there's like a letter right here actually. I think this is it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, so Sam is saying Katie, oh, Katie is only three years. Katie is only three years older than Sam and yet she's allowed to go across the entire ocean and is exploring Europe, whereas, what, what was it she wanted to do? You forbid me from going in the city on her own. So it kind of seems like they have that protective, like, youngest, youngest child mentality, which I hate. I'm a younger sibling. I'm the youngest. There's only two of us. Um, and my parents uh, are definitely like that. Basically, like, I get treated by a different standard because I'm the youngest. So my sister, I mean, it's all, 
it's almost exactly like this scenario here. Um, Even the mother and father are... Wait a minute, did we listen to the cassette tape that I found? Wasn't there a cassette tape somewhere? Hold on, let me go find that. Sorry, no, let me finish my thought, sorry. Um, I feel like the parents and Sam and Sam's girlfriend are living, breathing people. They have dynamic, they have... Where are we going? Where is this? I'm so lost. Where am I? Citizenship. Is it a birth date? Try uh, 1972. That's four digits. Oh, it might be. It might be. Uh, date of birth, 1950. That's a year. Do we know our parents' anniversary? 1950. It's going to be related to something around here. Oh, geez, it broke. Oh, no, there's just wood in there. Uh, there are no numbers on this map. So... Postcard. No, it wouldn't be from a... Whoa! They tell you to stick what? with the group on field trips, Katie. There's a reason for that. Lonnie and I snuck off on the side paths at Multnomah Falls and got a little lost. Okay, a lot lost. Like, for hours. Right before the bus left, we found a trail, and came running down the path, soaked and covered in mud, shouting for the bus not to leave. The school called home. Mom and Dad said, you didn't get into trouble like this before you met that Lonnie girl. But I don't think they know, no, about us. Kids at school, though, I'm really afraid that's a whole other story. Stick with the group, Katie. Stick with the group. Ah, oh, that's... That's kind of sad. I know what she's trying to say. She's saying that... Well, because she's gay, she's basically a minority. She's kind of an outsider, especially in the world of 1995. Like... It was not okay back then um, for a lot of you younger people like it was it was rough most people hit it um, almost everyone hit it so I think um, she's trying to say being different is going to be much harder being different from everyone else not being the quote-unquote normal is always going to be a struggle so sticking with the group you know is that's what she's telling her big sister to do. Let's read this. Hey Sam, I'm writing to you from Molt Noma Falls. I'm here on a stupid class trip, which is stupid because it's March and I don't know if anyone's running this school. If anyone running this school has been to Oregon, but it's cold and rainy as shit in March. Wish you were here. Oh wait, you are here because I'm writing this to you in the gift shop. Oh shit, here you come. <laughs> oh, this is from this is from Lonnie. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. That is so super cute. I just love their antics. The way that these characters are written, it's just, they're so vibrant. They are so vibrant. Okay, we're looking for a four-digit code. Four-digit code. Four-digit code. Okay, guys, I'm an idiot. There's the safe. Here's some numbers. There's the safe. Here's some numbers. I was looking everywhere. I was on the right track. I knew that uh, I knew that they would be numbers nearby. So let's just try. Uh, let's just try all of these dates. So let's try 1957 first. 19. Ooh, I was close. 1950, 1957, 1957. No. I'm gonna feel so dumb if it's not one of these. 1960. 1960. Negative. Uh, 1963. I don't... Oh, no. Don't tell me we're going to have to... Oh, wait. Terry? Oh, my God. Terry? This is our father? Wow. Are we going to have to do math to figure out the year he was born? It better not. Tw uh, what was it? 1963? Three. It worked! Oh, sh 
Nice! Okay. What do we have here? Oil of clove. Don't know what that is. What? Hydrogen peroxide. Oh yeah, we gotta keep that safe. Holy shit! This is an ethereal safe! No. Now I'm getting the spooky vibes. Uh, what is this? Here? Solution of morphine. Okay, yeah, this... This could probably and it's probably expired as shit. Should definitely be in a safe. Uh Aquatil. Each coated tablet. I don't know what this is. Indications. Relief of const uh, of occasional constipation. Oh yeah. We gotta leave the la laxatives under lock and key here. Uh Billeron? Iron bile salts? Not to be used when symptoms of appendicitis. I don't know what this is. Get out of here. Some, somebody hasn't cleaned this out in a long time. I feel like our father probably didn't know the combination. Whoa! Old school syringe! Our father probably didn't even know the combination. Which is weird. But granted, I would probably have guessed after, after the numbers being right here. If I had to guess, I would have picked like the year that Terry was born, not the last time I measured, the last time I measured his, uh, his height. And this is morphine, right? Morphine, yes? Well, I can't read this. It's, it is morphine, right? Yes. Uh, more morphine, more morphine. Don't use that. It's probably so old. Syringe. It'd be pretty cool if I need to take that syringe somewhere and stick it in something. Oscar Mason returned to sender was supposed to be sent to a Mary Greenbrier Greenbrier Mary in Olympia, Washington. That's who's Mary Greenbrier? Is that our grandmother? I'm trying to think what is our mother's name? I don't think it's Mary. Sister! Oh, pfft. I'm such an idiot. No, 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 you don't understand. I need to do things the most difficult way possible. Out of all the ways there are to do things, I need to choose the most difficult instead of just flipping over the letter to see who it's written to. I, I need to just try to surmise. So this is our great uncle's sister. So our great aunt, which would also be our grandfather's sister. Okay. Got it. So the guy who left us this house wrote this to his sister. <clears throat> Ahem. I unite what shall unite? I write. I write what shall be my last appeal to go unanswered one way or the other. I feel a prisoner as on an island. And you know what? We don't know why this is called the Psycho House. Oh my god. Maybe this will explain it. I feel a prisoner, as on an island, with no jailer, no human soul for commune, commune, only my one mind examining itself endlessly, endlessly, searching for relief. In the years since transgression, in the years since transgression, I have sought no absolution, only I wonder what year this was written. Only bear, bear forgiveness? In good faith, I have removed myself from all temptation, sacrificed to prove my commitment, however I can imagine. Since mother's passing, I have yearned for nothing more than the acknowledgement of my own kin to be treated as human again. To breathe the air of human spirit once more. By grace, even a wretch like me could be saved. But I do not expect it. If no response is received, I shall henceforth accept my sentence and one day simply cease to be with a brother's love always. What? I need to reread this. Okay, I have legitimately spent the last 30 minutes trying to figure out who is who in this family with the different last names and everything and 
I have uh, created this incredibly janky uh, family tree. So basically, the one who wrote this letter that we're reading right now is Oscar Mason, who is our father's uncle. And see, the, the reason why I was getting so confused is because I thought that Oscar Mason was Richard, uh, Terry's father's brother, but no. Um, Oscar is related to Terry's mother, not his father. That's where I was getting all screwed up. Okay, so basically you have, and the, the last names, right? Mary Greenbrier and Oscar Mason. So I didn't know that they were related like that. Okay, so our great uncle, wait. Yeah, our great uncle left his entire estate to our father, Mary Greenbrier, is his wife? No. S sister. Sister, sister, sister. Right. Okay. So Mary Greenbrier is his sister. So, in that case, if we're looking back at this, he wrote this to his sister. We know that because it says, Dear Sister. Oscar here is talking about some kind of forgiveness. He thinks that he did something... He thinks that he did something that he needs forgiveness for. He's talking about... It, it kind of sounds like his sister has cut him off and because it says I'm writing this as my last appeal to go unanswered so it sounds like uh, Oscar's sister um, has been ignoring him he's looking for forgiveness but we don't really know what for in the years since transgression is the only thing that it says it sounds like he's going through depression and he's basically a recluse at this point. Um, I've removed myself from all temptation. Like, that's weird. That's a weird thing to say. But he's also asking for forgiveness for something. I don't know. I feel like it's super cryptic. Anyway, uh, I just spent like the last 40 minutes legit trying to, de to decipher what, what relevance this letter has. I'm trying to dig up what I can to find out more about this Oscar person. I feel like we're missing a piece of the puzzle, a piece of Oscar's puzzle. For one, why why is it called the Psycho House? I don't, I can't recall like coming across anything like that. He died at 60, which is kind of young. Um, and it even, even confirms here that he was a recluse. Uh, he was seldom seen outside his house. Where did it say that? Oh, in the decades preceding his passing, he was seldom seen outside his house. I believe he's also the one who owned the pharmacy and sold or gave away the pharmacy to his assistant. I'm going to look around some more and tell you what I find. Okay, so I came back here to take a look at the uh, will. The will that says uh, Oscar left everything to his nephew Terrence or Terry uh, to see like what kind of relationship they had that that um, Oscar would leave his, you know, his entire estate. I mean, granted, he didn't have any children, but anyway, I came back and I was looking for more stuff on Oscar and I found this and I didn't read it yet, but I don't think I, Terrence Greenbrier. Dear Terrence, I write on what I hope and imagine is a joyous occasion. News reaches me that you are newly married to a wonderful young woman. I have had more than a little time to consider my past and my family, and my thoughts have often lingered on your development and welfare in the ten years since we last met. Your marriage gives me much reassurance in this regard. You are always welcome on Arbor Hill. I will understand if something... Oh, I will understand something if you fail... Fail? feel. I will understand something if you feel you cannot accept this invitation. Yours very sincerely, Oscar Mason, 1972. Huh. They haven't seen each other in 10 years? Like, a, like from this letter, they hadn't spoken in 10 years? I've had more than a little time to 
consider my past and my family. Is he talking about his lack of family? And my thoughts have often lingered on your development and welfare? In the... Huh. That's... That's kind of cryptic. God, I wish there was more... I wish there was more. I wish I knew what year he became a recluse. Because then we can look at what was he doing around that time, or what was that time period. Said the last decades of his life he became a recluse. But what I keep coming back to, what I keep thinking about, is the, um, the letter that says he's removed himself from all temptation. Like, he thinks he's done something really wrong. And considering he sent that to his sister, who is Terry's mother, and him and Terry haven't spoken in ten years from the date of this, and maybe they didn't ever speak again until his death, I'm thinking... Oscar's got some dark secret. Some super dark secret that, um... Maybe has something to do with why it's called the Psycho House? He's done something awful. He's looking for forgiveness from his sister and from the rest of his family. Because he says he just wants to be acknowledged by his kin as a human being again. And then... I've had more than a little time to consider my past and my family. And my thoughts have often lingered on your development and welfare. I wonder if... And he's been cut off from the family. Oscar's been cut off from the family. We know that because in his letter to his sister, he says... They've been going unanswered. I think there might be some implications that... Maybe he molested Terry? I need to go down to the basement again. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Maybe he... Maybe he was molest... Maybe he molested Terry? Which is why... That would explain why it says removed myself from temptation. Like, what? His... His deep dark secret has something to do with temptation. How the fuck do I get to the basement again? Alright guys, here's my take. So, this letter clearly sounds like he has wronged his own family. He says, I have yearned for nothing more than the acknowledgement of my own kin to be treated as human again, to breathe the air as a human sp uh, air, air of human spirit once more. Um, he's saying, I shall henceforth accept my sentence. Um, so I think he's done something to his family. He's reached out to his family. He reached out to his sister whenever this was written. And then he reached out to Terry, um, after, when he got married. And he literally said in the letter, I understand if you cannot accept this invitation, which is to come see him at this house. And the fact that that note was hidden. That note was hidden. So there's something going on there. There's something going on there. And I think... I think it may be possible that... Terry grew up in this house. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Terry grew up in this house. Huh. Why doesn't this work? Why is there just an empty... Why is this just an empty dark room? Oh, wait. Grab toy. What do we have? I can't see. What is this? Oh, it's just a toy. So Terry played down here, it looks like. Terry used to play down here. Anything else? Just wood? Just an empty cabinet with a light that doesn't work? Whatever. Okay, well, I don't know. I guess, uh, 
I guess I'll just keep looking around if I find anything, and uh, I'll let you know. And then we will go up and we will read. Actually, let's do that now. I can always make, I can always make extra scenes um, after after the video if I find other things. Insert them different places. Let's go see what Sam has to say to us. So the format of this game has been. Um, it sounds like all the narration that Sam has been doing has been directed at us, Kate, her big sister. So it's really heartwarming that, that Sam feels like she can confide in her big sister as much as she does, like literally holding nothing back. And that's really valuable. Really valuable, especially considering that her parents are not acknowledging her individuality, her sexuality her independence. So all this has been a story. All of this has been like a journal to the big sister. And presumably uh, Lonnie and Sam ran off together and that would just be super sweet and romantic. Uh-oh. Do not read if you're not Katie. I'm so sorry. That I can't be there to see you in person. That I can't tell you all this myself. But I hope as you read this journal, and you think back, that you'll understand why I had to do what I did. And that you won't be sad. And you won't hate me. And you'll just know that I am where I need to be. I love you so much, Katie. I'll see you again. Someday. So she did. She did run off with um, Lonnie. Oh, wow. I was hoping for a little bit more. I was hoping for a little bit more out of that um, notebook, but... Well, that's basically all the commentary and discussion that I had uh, in mind, so I guess we'll just watch the credits, and then uh, if I find anything from... Uh, messing around a bit. I will stick them at the end of the video. Thanks for watching Gone Home. Uh, I hope it wasn't uh, too tedious watching me wander around a mansion that I should by uh, by all rights have memorized by now but constantly got lost in. And uh, I really liked it. It was great. I want another game like this uh, with maybe a little bit... No, I wouldn't say less storytelling to it. I would say... I wouldn't say less storytelling to it but maybe more more interaction because this was basically I feel like this was basically a walking sim simulator with a very good atmosphere the uh, stormy night outside gave a good kind of spooky vibe we did get some spooky vibes like um, the the light bulb exploding and uh, finding like the the ghost hunting notes and stuff of what they were trying to do But it was great. The character, the characters were fantastic. The, the stories that they gave the entire family was so believable. So many little details, even quirks of personality, like personality quirks and shenanigans. Like, and you would think that you could, some might say that it's like pointless details about uh, Lonnie and Sam's everyday life. But I argue that it's not, it's not uh, pointless. It, it serves a purpose. It serves to give depth to the characters. And they feel like real people. They really do. Like they could very well exist. And I love that. That's fantastic. So that was Gone Home, everybody. Oh, SNL. So Sam ran off with Lonnie. Great. Good for them. I I wonder whether it was necessary for them to run off together. Like, did they really need to leave? I, I mean, Sam hadn't even finished high school, so it's, it's going to be kind of a struggle. Sam was working, so possibly she could start providing for herself. You know, she had some form of income. 
I am pleased. I'm pleased with the ending. I'm very relieved that it was positive and happy and a good ending rather than something negative like I, I was afraid it was kind of going to steer towards since I did get pretty invested in the characters. That's what, that's what the developers did. They all those little details creating such a, a complex characters really gets you invested. So anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. And if I find anything new from looking around, you'll see it at the end of the video. Take care.